Hey fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today I have a sample test. It's problems 1 through 20. It's practice problems for the AFOQT, the Air Force Officer Qualifying Test. The first 10 problems are in a previous video. I'll put a card here so you go back and watch those first 10 problems. And now I'm going to do 11 through 20. What you want to do is have a notebook out in front of you, do the problems before I do them. Pause the video and then watch how I do them. The way to do well on standardized math tests is to do a lot of problems. So you got to just keep doing practice problems. These might not be the exact same ones, but they'll give you a good idea what those problems will be like. I'll also go over a few tips and tricks um, to help you out as well to learn how to, to kind of master standardized math tests. All right, let's get started with number 11 here. I have an algebraic equation. It's multiple choice. I glance up at the equation, I try to identify exactly what we're doing. So what we're doing is getting x by itself. I glance down at the answers to see if any of them make sense. If I were just having to race, I would guess it's either going to be A or B. But let's go ahead and do this problem. So I'm trying to get x by itself. I could do it two ways. I can move all the x's to this side or all the x's to this side. The key on algebra is you do whatever you want as long as you do it to both sides of the equation. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides. And then I'm going to add 6 to both sides. That's going to give me 2x minus x, 1x. Negative 6 plus 6, that cancels. My x's here cancel. 5 and 6 is 11. That's my answer. Answer B right there. Number 12, if x over 5 plus 10 equals 15, what's the value of x? Same thing. However, here we have a fraction. Um, so we're going to have to get x's by itself. And then glance down at the answers, all increments of 5. Um, so we'll see how that goes. So first thing I'll do here is I'll subtract 10 from both sides. That's going to give me x over 5. The 10 minus 10 is 0. 15 minus 10 is equal to 5. I have one fraction equal to another fraction. That's a proportion. Once I have it like this, a good way to solve is I could cross multiply, say this times this is equal to this times this. x times 1 is x. 5 times 5 is 25. So that's the correct answer right there. Answer D. The other way I could have done it is I had x over 5 is equal to 5. Multiply both sides by 5. Those would cancel. If I do that to the left, I do it to the right, and it would give me the same 25. Number 13, very similar to an equation. This is an inequality because there's no equal sign. It is greater than. If there's a line below it, it's greater than or equal to. The thing about an inequality, it's identical to an equation, except for there's one really key rule. If I multiply or divide by a negative, I got to flip that sign around. So I'm going to do everything the same. Um, let me add 3x to both sides right there. Let me subtract 26 from both sides. I got negative 5x plus 3x. That's going to give me a negative 2x. 26 minus 26 are canceling. I have my greater than sign. Negative 3x and 3x, they cancel. Negative 16 plus negative 26 is negative 42. OK, now what I got to do is I got to divide both sides by negative 2. And that's where that rule is going to come into play. I am dividing by a negative. That thing right there that's greater than is now less than. Negative 2's cancel. I got x by itself. Negative 42 divided by negative 22 is 21. So x is less than 21. Um, as I glance down at these answers, there are two answers with 21. Um, the question is, did you know that trick that when you divide by a negative, you flip that sign? So that's kind of the point of the problem. Answer C, your correct answer. Number 14, what is the sum of all possible values of z? So this is also solve the equation. The one thing we're introducing on this one are these straight bars. They are absolute values. So those two straight bars mean everything inside of it becomes positive. So whatever is in there, if this thing turns out to be a negative 23, absolute value makes it a 23. So it becomes positive. So what that means is, Whatever z minus 18 is, it could either be positive or negative. So either z minus 18 is equal to 5, or the other possibility is that this whole thing's negative, right? So this is plus or minus. 
So divide by a negative, and that's going to give me z minus 18 is equal to negative 5. Right? Because if this thing were negative, I would give it the absolute value and make it positive. Then I have two equations to solve. I add 18 to both sides. Adding 18 and 5 gives me 23, so z is equal to 23. That's a possible answer. Or I add 18 here to both sides. Negative 5 plus 18 right, is going to bring it down. z is equal to 13. So there are two solutions, 13 and 23. And it doesn't ask you what the two solutions are. It says, what is the sum of the solutions? So that means you've got to add these two together. So it's really two problems in one. 36, uh, there's your correct answer right there. A lot of times on problems like this, some of the solutions will be the 23 or the 13. And you'll end up getting it wrong, even though you did the problem right, because you didn't read the problem completely and see that you've got to add those two together. Number 15, this is checking the laws of exponents. The law of exponents that we're using here is if I have x to the m to the power of n, I multiply those together to get x to the mn. So through those parentheses, I have to multiply them. I got to multiply it by the 2 and then the 3. That's going to give me x to the 2 times 3, y to the 3 times 3, x to the 6, y to the ninth. Answer B right here. Number 16, also reviewing the rules of exponents. This rule right here is if I have x to the m over x to the n, that's going to be equal to the same base, and I subtract the exponent. So the rule here is x to the top one minus the bottom one, m minus n. So that's what I have to do here. I have similar bases, so I have y to the power of p plus q minus, and this is where it's going to be tricky, you got to distribute that minus through the quantity, minus the quantity, q minus p. So that I got to distribute that negative through the whole thing. So I have y to the power of p plus q minus q minus negative p, which is plus. Right? So I got that negative distributed negative q, and then negative negative gives me a positive p. Now I got q minus q, those will cancel. P plus P is 2P, so I have Y to the power of 2P, and that's going to be answer C right there. You know, clearly looking at those answers, they're testing to see if you remember to distribute that negative through the quantity. If you hadn't, that would have given you the wrong answer. Number 17 here, also going to be a test on ex exponents. I know that if my bases were equal, my exponents would have to be equal. My bases are not equal. But as I look up here, I can see 625 is divisible by 5. So I know I'm going to, that's probably going to be a base 5. So 5 times 5, 25, times 5, 125, 125 times 5, 625. So this 625 right here is the same thing as 5 to the fourth power. So I have 5 to the n plus 3 is equal to 625, or I could write that as 5 to the fourth power. My bases are equal, therefore my exponents have to be equal. n plus 3 is equal to 4. Subtracting 3 from both sides, I can see n is equal to 1, and that's going to be answer A right there. Number 18, what is the midpoint of the joining line segment between these two points? Easiest way to do this one is know the midpoint formula, and that midpoint formula is going to be the first x value plus the second x value divided by 2, so it's the average of the x values, comma, the average of the y values. So the first y plus the second y divided by 2. And that's going to give you a coordinate pair. And I can see my answers are coordinates like that. It doesn't matter which point you call x1 and y1, but once you pick one of them as 1, then this has to be, uh, both of them have to be 1. So this has to be x1, y1. This would be x2, y2. So then my first coordinate is x1, 2, plus 8, divided by 2, 2 plus 8, divided by 2. And then my second is my y value, 3, plus 9, divided by 2. 3 plus 9, divided by 2. 2 plus 8 is 10, divided by 2 is 5. 3 and 9 is 12, divided by 2 is 6. So I have a coordinate pair, 5, 6, and I could see his answer. B right there. 
Okay, problem number, actually before I do these last couple problems, uh, let me just reiterate how important it is to do a lot of practice problems. You kind of want to do them in a time setting without a calculator. You want to try and simulate what it's like to take that test. Um, so ideally a little bit stressful when you take that test. So make sure you do enough practice so it doesn't bother you. Mark up the problem as much as you can. You want to do that for a couple reasons. One is you're less likely to make a careless mistake. And the second is if you go back to that problem because you didn't have time to finish it, um, all your work will be there and you won't have to start again. If you're taking an exam on the computer, you still have scratch paper. So keep your scratch paper all organized, number the problems so you go back and check them. If you're new to the channel, think about subscribing. It's Colfax Math, a practical math channel, kind of helping you be successful on any standardized math test. There's also a great app available right here. Um, there's an additional one specifically for the Air Force officer qualifying test. I'll put a link to that in the description. Okay, number 19, what is the slope of the line y equals negative 3x plus 1? This one you kind of have to know what the slope intercept form is. That general equation is y equals mx plus b. That m right there is your slope. That b right there is your y-intercept. So it's just asking you, do you know the general form? And if you do, you would know that's the slope right there and your correct answer. If you had a graph or problem like that, not part of this problem, but just a little additional information, you would graph the y-intercept first. Vertical axis is always y. Horizontal axis is x. One would be somewhere there. From one, I rise negative three. One, two, three, and I run one. So it's a vertical slope line like that. Arrows on both ends to say it's infinite. Number 20 right here, our last problem. This is a hard one right here, a lot of notation. This is f of x notation, but I have f of x squared. And what is the value of f of 144? So 144 and x squared are the same thing. So x squared and 144 have to be the same thing. I take the square root of both sides. I see x is equal to 12. Um, and then now that I have that value for x, I take that value for x and I plug it right in there. So f of x squared is going to be equal to 1 quarter times my x value, 12, minus 3. So 1 fourth times 12, that's a fraction. 4 will go into here one time, into here three times. And then that's going to give me 3 right here, minus 3. So 3 minus 3 is 0. And that's my correct answer right there. All right, well, I sure hope this video uh, helped you. Go back and watch the previous 10, and this is the second 10. If you want more help, you go to this tutoring app right here. Thank you for watching. And again, if you're new to the channel, think about subscribing. The more practice problems you do, the better you get, especially at these standardized math tests.